Do you want to introduce it? Okay. All right, okay, yeah. Hi, I'm Jonathan Pinto. I'm a gastroenterologist at Valley Medical Group. I'm Anish Patel. I'm also a gastroenterologist at Valley Medical Group. And we're going to answer some questions for the community, some common symptoms and questions that um, a lot of people probably have. So we'll start off with the first question. Um, what are some common symptoms that would indicate a problem and lead me to seek out a gastroenterologist? So, very important question. If you have any symptoms that are new or bothersome, including acid reflux or heartburn, abdominal pain, new diarrhea or constipation, particularly if you see something like blood in your stool, you should definitely see a gastroenterologist to have an evaluation. Um, so I think the spectrum is pretty large, um, but I think that if you have any sort of vague ab abdominal symptoms or gastrointestinal symptoms that don't really um, go away and are persistent, then I think um, you should definitely come and seek a gastroenterologist um, for further advice. What is heartburn and is it serious? So I think a lot of us suffer from heartburn. Um, I think heartburn can just, it, it can just be some discomfort or uncomfortable feeling in the middle of the chest um, to feeling as though you're having kind of reflux of food contents um, coming up into your mouth. Could even be just a sour or metallic taste in your mouth. In all of those circumstances, um, it is reasonable to, to go to a gastroenterologist for further help. Heartburn is a very common symptom that we see all the time. A lot of us have it and ignore it, but it can be serious if you have it for a long period of time. Heartburn can cause changes in your throat or esophagus that can over time change into something more concerning like cancer. So having an evaluation early on when you're having these symptoms, particularly if they're bothersome and uh, you've had them for quite a while, it's definitely good to see a gastroenterologist to prevent any further serious complications from happening later on down the line. Okay, so next question is, I'm 50 years old and my physician told me that I need to have a colonoscopy. What's involved in this test and will it be uncomfortable or painful? First of all, um, colonoscopies uh, are done in the setting of um, prevention for colorectal cancer. It's a frequently done um, procedure. The preparation for the colonoscopy is done the night before. That's probably the worst part. It, you know, you, you're kind of clearing out the bowels. The procedure itself is very um, straightforward. It, it kind of is, it's usually done in about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, there's an anesthesiologist in the room that administers the anesthesia as well, so you're completely, awake, uh, completely asleep, sorry. You know, you're not gonna feel anything um, or be uncomfortable during the procedure. Um, and then the recovery period afterwards is, is pretty quick as well. So usually less than an hour, um, and then you're able to go home and get on with the, with the rest of the day. Uh, most patients are naturally a little nervous when they come in for their first time, but after the procedure, typically they're very surprised that it's over already and they're very comfortable, they don't have any discomfort, and most patients wish they had done it a lot earlier because they allow their fare to prevent them from coming in. So I would encourage anyone out in the community, if you have not had a colonoscopy, come in, get an evaluation. It's nothing to be scared of. So our next question is, I have Crohn's disease. My son is 18 years old and has been having some similar symptoms. Is Crohn's disease hereditary? First of all, Crohn's disease falls under the umbrella of inflammatory bowel diseases. So inflammatory bowel diseases actually um, can be ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Patients that have relatives that, are, that have inflammatory bowel disease are at more risk of um, getting inflammatory bowel disease themselves as well. Symptoms are very, they can be very vague, just things like abdominal pain, some nausea, vomiting, um, to more severe things like weight loss, uh, persistent diarrhea, constipation, blood in the stools as well. If there's any concern and if these symptoms kind of um, prolong, then I think um, going to a gastroenterologist is definitely the wisest thing to do. Could some other condition be causing my irritable bowel syndrome symptoms? Could I have inflammatory bowel disease or even colon cancer? So this is an excellent question. Irritable bowel syndrome is something that can cause vague symptoms, including diarrhea or constipation or alternating symptoms between diarrhea and constipation. Uh, patients can have some abdominal discomfort and have to go to the bathroom frequently, particularly right after meals. These symptoms are usually worse during times of stress or when patients have a lot of anxiety. And it's very important to get an evaluation by a gastroenterologist to make sure nothing else is causing these symptoms. 
Inflammatory bowel disease and colon cancer can cause very similar symptoms, so it's important to differentiate between the two and make sure there's not something more serious going on. If you do have irritable bowel syndrome, there are treatments for it, and you don't have to suffer through these symptoms. Even if there's something you've had over a long period of time and you're used to living with, they can be treated and controlled very well. So the next question is, what is gallbladder disease and how would I know if I have it? So usually I think the most common um, complaint associated with gallbladder disease would be pain um, on the right side, kind of um, below the rib on the right upper side over here. Can also be in the middle of the abdomen, uh, middle of the stomach as well. This could just be related to gallstones, so stones that are sitting in the gallbladder. Um, but then, you know, they can also lead to inflammation of the gallbladder and even um, a stone being stuck in the tube that, or the duct that drains the gallbladder. And so in those, in those circumstances, you could have things like fevers, you could feel just um, very fatigued, you can feel nauseous. Um, as I said, you could have the abdominal pain and these kind of symptoms should be kind of, um, would lead you to think maybe I have something wrong with my gallbladder. Um, and then that's, that's when you should definitely come and um, seek uh, more advice from a gastroenterologist. And these gallbladder symptoms and symptoms of gallbladder disease in general, they can be intermittent, meaning they can come and go. A lot of times they're following a meal, particularly a fatty meal, something that contains a lot of fried food or fatty food. Um, so if you have any of those symptoms, you know, definitely seek a gastroenterologist to have it evaluated. So what are some of the possible complications from ulcerative colitis and how do, we, how do you screen for them? So ulcerative colitis is one of the inflammatory bowel diseases. Inflammatory bowel disease in general, both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's increase your risk of having colon cancer. So it's very important to have a gastroenterologist that follows you very closely and to have frequent screening colonoscopies to both assess the degree of your disease and how well controlled it is, as well as to prevent any changes that can lead to colon cancer. We're able to take care of medications that can control the symptoms of inflammatory bowel disease and also provide the endoscopic care for, for screening for colorectal cancers as well. Next question is, what is the difference between IBS and IBD? Um, so IBS stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome and IBD stands for Inflammatory Bowel Disease and this is a disease process that can actually lead to a colon cancer in the future and have uh, more severe symptoms. Usually irritable bowel syndrome is actually more of a functional disorder um, that doesn't really have any long-term complications. It just um, has a lot of symptoms associated which can you know, affect usual daily life and interfere with just your usual daily activities and things like that. But a lot of the symptoms are very similar, things like um, abdominal pains or stomach pain, um, nausea, vomiting, um, diarrhea, constipation. Um, some of the symptoms that may be more associated with inflammatory bowel disease would be things like seeing blood in the stool, um, a lot of weight loss, um, and then, you know, as a, if you have family history of inflammatory bowel disease, then obviously, you know, you would be a little bit more at risk of probably developing that than someone without having family history of inflammatory bowel disease. Even as gastroenterologists, for us, it's diff difficult to tell the difference between the two without often doing a lot of tests, including colonoscopy. Uh, so very important to see your gastroenterologist, have a proper evaluation, and get a diagnosis of which one you have. So thanks a lot for um, all these great questions. If you need to see a gastroenterologist, then um, you can come, and, you know, come to the office and see myself, Dr. Pinto, um, or any of our partners at Valley Medical Group.